I recently spent a month on safari in the great animal preserves of East Africa, the high grasslands of Kenya and Tanzania. We used no bearers or guns. We went not to hunt, but to see wild animals in their natural surroundings. And we found as romantic as any hunter's safari, the big game lands with names rolling out like drums. Serengeti, Manyara, Kilimanjaro, Kimana, Amboseli, Olduvai, Ngora Ngora. Coming back to gray skies and sober landscape in New England, I had a strong sense of deprivation. I felt curiously diminished, less alive. What I missed chiefly was the teeming atmosphere of life in which, for those weeks, we were immersed. We were plunged, day and night, in the life of wild animals who wandered at will and without fear before our eyes. Why should I, born and bred in New England, now miss these exotic animals I had never seen before? There was some tenuous link between us, and now that it is broken, I feel deprived, poorer. I must explore this poverty and this richness. What did I have for this month? What do I remember? Flying to East Africa from Europe or America, one wakes to dazzling sunshine roaring in the plane window. Almost an affront to eyesight. Below are great expanses of wild land stretching out in all directions. Rolling plains, wooded hills, an occasional lake, a rim of distant mountains, and very far away, one peak with a plume of snow. Then suddenly, the green trees and white towers of the modern city of Nairobi. One steps out at the airport into the dry heat of full summer. The dome of sky is pushed up overhead, and the horizons are stretched out, as far as sight can go. On all fronts, the span is gigantic. One takes a deep breath and has the sense of a great continent. In Nairobi National Park, one drives over baked, dusty roads through dry plains of pale, quivering grass and scrubby, stunted thornbush. One rattles down stony, serpentine valleys, where a hidden river is betrayed by a green trail of flat-topped acacia trees. On the bare hills, one begins to see unfamiliar silhouettes of animals against the sky. Push through groups of zebra, cropping grass by the roadside, near enough to see the pinkish bloom of fine red hair that lies over their vivid black and white stripes. If you drive too close, they rear up on hind legs and wheel like plump circus ponies all in a row. Here are flocks of gazelle with flashing white bellies and rumps and faces patterned intricately as flowers. Looking up from their quiet cropping, they stand, startled still for a second, like glass animals. Then, with the click of a car door, an explosion of hooves, heels, legs, and flicking tails, they are gone. Further on, in a grove of trees, are giraffe, soft in color and fawn-like, despite their great height and vivid spots. Their faces are gentle, almost human, with big wrinkled mouths and large surprised eyes under a coronet of ears and horny knobs. When they move, 
They are dream animals, drifting across the landscape like milkweed down, or enormous insects, floating long-legged over a meadow. There are colonies of baboons bouncing over a hill, and short-legged warthogs trotting busily through stubble, heads over heavy with double tusks, whip-like tails erect as flags. And over a hill in the shade of thorn trees, we come on a pride of lions sprawled in midday sleep. Three or four blonde lionesses lie relaxed, poured out like honey in the sun. They look replete, drunk with sleep and sun, totally unaware of an audience. The lion, sitting apart on a nearby slope, is aware, but completely unconcerned. His flanks gleam in the sun, his head upraised, facing the wind. He sniffs and surveys the world. Tawny in the golden grass, he is totally right in his kingdom, as in fact every animal in the park seems to be in its right place. But soon one is out on safari, in wilderness, far from Nairobi, airports and civilization in a Land Rover carrying tents, bedding, food, and water. Africa, as one is always told, is a country of violent contrasts. Even the climatic contrasts within a single day in the highlands of Kenya or Tanzania are breathtaking. At midday, the thin air trills with the dry heat. Bare hills burn in the copper dust. Eyes rest in relief on anything green. A line of flat-topped acacia trees floating like clouds on the airless savannas, or the four gentle peaks of the Ngang Hills. One sits and waits for evening. At our camp near Kamana in Kenya, we can see a distant line of ragged purple mountains to the north. To the south, Kilimanjaro's white top, cloud-covered all day, looms up enormous, gleaming, benign as the full moon. The savannas turn golden. Acacia shadows lengthen to dark pools across the grass. The air clears it is still. Vistas expand between trees. One could advance unhindered to any horizon. Down river stands a cliff of elephants, dark, enormous, motionless, their tree-sized legs rooted in sand, their ears widespread, great trunks facing us, white tusks gleaming in the dusk. They begin to move in single file along the bank, great shadows melting in and out of trees. Later, we hear them at the muddy pool across river from our tent. They are pawing at the ground with ponderous feet to reach new water. They slosh in the mud and spray each other with their trunks. We can dimly see their hulking shapes. And as we hear the water on their dusty hides, we feel ourselves a part of their joy. Elephants, browsing through trees as lesser animals through bushes, not only give one another dimension of size and space, but another dimension of time, partly because their mammoth forms take one back to the world of mastodons, partly because the slow, even rhythm of their march makes one feel they are moving to another time than man's. They have come from ages before and are going somewhere man will never reach. Grizzled and wrinkled as old trees, they seem even older old as hills or rocks carved out of earth and imperishable as earth. Night is again violent, cool, even cold on the high plateau. There is a sudden change of tension, a heightened quality of awareness. The mass of stars overhead beat down like rain. The profound mystery of darkness inundates the world. A flood of sights, smells, noises, all alien today, roll in at dusk. Against a curtain of insect drone, 
one hears the rumble of lions, the eerie cry of hyena, sharp zebra barks, braying nu, shrieking baboons, and a thousand unexplained hoots, snorts, and thuds. One listens as does a dog on the watch, as primitive man once listened in mystery and apprehension. It is safe in the tent, a lantern hung on the ridge pole, the fire flickering outside, and yet one listens. One listens. Lions made their kills last night, or at dawn, and now gorged are asleep under trees. Hyenas have found the carcass. Vultures circle overhead. With pre-dawn comes the benison of small bird song, innocent twittering in the trees overhead, announcing to the world that night is over, and those who have survived can greet the morning, radiant and cool. The mountain reappears, newly capped with snow. The prairie shimmers with a hint of dew. Zebra moves slowly through vistas of trees, cropping the silver grass like animals of paradise. Day has returned. Mm -hmm. 